Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I made this card with products from Stampin' Up. I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website. You can just click the links for the products that you'd like and be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up. This card is one from the series of getting started that I like to do with minimal supplies. These products come from the beginner's brochure. This is where you'll find the stamp set that I'm using and also other products. If you'd like me to send you one of these catalogs, I'd be happy to send that to you. Just email me with your address. I am using the Four Season Floral Stamp Set and the classic Stampin' Spots. I am, they do not come in this case, but I do have the case insert if you're interested. We're going to be using the Real Red and Granny Apple Green. We're using a Whisper White note card and envelope. We're using some of the Designer Series paper from the Brights collection. This is Granny Apple Green. I do have my chamois out and available. I will be using dimensionals and snail adhesive and the snips. I'm going to show you a way to step up this card with a bit of granny apple green cardstock. So I'll go ahead and get that out too. The first thing we want to do is stamp the poinsettia in real red ink all the way around on the card front. You are just going to be seeing the edge of this, so it's not real critical. But I think you are going to want to turn it and try and fill in as much of this side part as you can. The nice thing about the photopolymer stamps is you can see through them. And I've got kind of a skinny spot here, and so I'm going to just try and go this way. And I've got a little bit that didn't get stamped, so there you go. Then I want to show you how I cut the designer series paper. This designer series paper comes six by six. This is just a scrap of paper. I already cut up some designer series paper and the way it'll come out is you'll get the designer series paper for two of these cards plus another strip that's one and a half by six that will be useful for other cards. So we're going to start cutting it at four and a half. So you'll have this strip left over and then this is six so we're going to cut it at three. And so that's what this piece is here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this on my card base. You could use either side of this designer series paper, but I think I liked it this way. And if you put the adhesive just around the outside of the designer series paper, it will help. And at this point, it doesn't really matter which, card, which way your card is facing, but I always like to open my cards before I put anything on just to be sure I know which direction I'm going. Then I have a two inch punch 
and I also am going to be using some of this crinkled white ribbon which I love. So I'm going to open this card up and I'm going to punch just and I'm going to punch a hole through this card front. So I'm going to put it in from the left side of the card and I'm going to pretty much slide it in as far as it goes and it will be even with the green which makes it easy and punch. I didn't really glue the inside of my card pieces together so I have two pieces one which is stamped around the edges we're going to use this piece you might want to save this piece for another project and we're going to stamp that poinsettia one more time on this piece but I would like to have the leaves to be green so I'm going to use my blender pen and I'm going to find my leaves. It will help you if you actually look at the picture on the cover of your stamp case so you can find those leaves and you're going to clean off as much of the ink as you can. Pick up a little bit more and here's another leaf. We're going to pick up some of the spruce or fur, whatever that is, the evergreen. And you may want to pick up the leaves from around these berries. Not sure what kind of leaves those are. And one, whoops, one more. I see I picked up some of the red, so I'm going to actually pick up some more ink from the edge here and put that back on right there. And we're going to um, find a clean corner of this block and stamp some ink on here to use as a palette and pick that up and then use that to color in the leaves. You'll get an easier, you'll have an easier time coloring if you keep the pen down kind of low. So you're really using the side of the brush tip. And then we'll stamp this on our Whisper White. And now if you can leave it just like this or you can color it in if you'd like by picking up a little bit more of that ink. Get some more red ink over here. And you can color in the poinsettia. I'll go ahead and clean this stamp and I'm going to take the stamp off and help myself by cleaning the block as well and I'll go ahead and put this back in the package this is a wonderful stamp set that has a happy birthday greeting and a thank you greeting but no Merry Christmas I'm sorry but this is a very festive poinsettia. If you have another stamp that says Merry Christmas, by all means, you can use that on the inside. So we're going through here and tying a bow around here. I do not have an easy time tying bows. I do know that if you pull it to the top and bottom, it will be 
better, but I also like to use what I call my third hand. It's an alligator clip from the electrical department of any hardware store. They're very inexpensive. I don't know why bows with ribbon are so much harder than just tying your shoes. I mean, you don't have to reach down to the floor to reach, so I don't know. You can make a bigger bow and then snug it up. And then I like to put my finger on the center and pull it smaller. I think that a smaller bow looks prettier. And I'll go ahead and trim the ends. Then I'll get out some dimensionals and you'll probably want about three dimensionals on the back of this circle. We just want to fit this into the center as best we can. And then support it as we open up this card so that our poinsettia is both on the inside and on the outside. I told you that I was going to show you a way to make this card just a little fancier. So I'm taking that ribbon out and on my supply list for this getting started I have both a two inch and a two and a fourth inch punch. So you're going to use the smaller punch and punch right in the middle of that. And then with the larger punch you're going to center that hole and try and get as even as you can around there. We've been having a lot of airplanes going by, sorry about that. And you can use your snail to add adhesive to this, but I'm going to suggest to you that the liquid, that the multi-purpose liquid glue is really a better choice for something so skinny And this also gives us a little bit of time. We can wiggle it around a little bit to get it in just the perfect place. And honestly, the green glue is one of my favorites. So we're just going to put this right over the circle. And since that inside circle was punched with the same punch, it will be a perfect fit and just give a little subtle extra frame. And then we can go ahead and tie that ribbon around in there again. I also wanted to mention that if you don't have a Merry Christmas stamp, you can always just write your greeting with a regular pen inside. Of course, if you do this, you're going to want to tie your bow after you put that on there and trim it, because now it's shorter to get it to work. I made it. And there you go. Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free detailed directions and links for the products I used. Also on my website you'll find a shop button. Under shop you'll find products from Bev, shopping strategies, frequent shopper points, a link to my online store at Stampin' Up. When you click Products from Bev, you'll find information about sharing my current products notebook in Evernote and taggers. I started making taggers when all of those layering shapes came out and it was so hard for me to figure out which one I used and how to tell somebody else which one I used. So I made taggers. Each tagger has the name of the dies the item number, how many in the set, and each tagger has the size of that shape. I also sell my cardstock sampler, fine tip glue pen replacement tips, and large and small reclosable bags that I use for designing series paper, both the 6x6 and the 12x12. And I have a link for my friend's bow maker. Under inspiration, you can scroll my projects, look at the latest post, Find out about the basics, which I've designed especially for new stampers and techie tips. Under getting organized, you'll find links to 
stamp case slips, product labels, large labels, case inserts, ink refill cases, lots of coloring tools, stamp pad storage that you can make for yourself for practically no money, catalog tabs, a quick reference, and a wish list with the catalog index, directions for my basic toolkit to go and my compact desktop toolbox. I have so many people looking for my Evernote current products notebook that I have a new tab just for that. You can find out how to share my searchable catalog. And if you're interested in joining my team, you can go to SIP together and you can find out how to join my team so that you can either save money or make money. Almost all of those resources are free. More organization means more time for crafting. Talk to you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.